Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kisanas and the last episode guys we finished up our arc shot so hopefully you guys are going in and you're adding different cinematography shots to your actual game now. We've got a bunch of different helper functions in there that allow us to go through and move the camera closer and, and reset the camera to different positions so you can go in and you can do things like long shots or, or, or close shots or you know anything you really want to do. Guys, in this episode, what I'd like to take a look at is building a, a simple helper function that we're going to use in several different assets in the future. I'd also like to take a look at creating a visual and an audio representation of success for our character, because right now, our character grabs up some cake, uh, the, the uh, arc shot plays, but there's nothing to indicate that anything awesome happened, I mean, other than the fact that the arc shot occurred. I want to have an, an audio as well as a visual representation of success for our character, okay? Let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm looking for both an audio and a visual representation of success whenever our character picks up this piece of cake. And the visual representation is going to be a, a star particle burst. So basically, if we take a look at our cake over here, where's my mouse? There it is. Our, our, our cake, let me, why am I not seeing my particles? Star particles, there we go. So there's our star particles. And I kind of want it to look very, very similar to this, but as opposed to being something that, that's spitting out particles over time, instead I wanted to uh, spit out a bunch of particles all at once. So what I'm going to do, starting with this as a base, I'm going to click on the star particles, I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to say duplicate. All right, and when I do, we immediately get this second set of star particles right here. Now, I'm going to take these star particles, and I'm going to drag it off of the cake pickup. Okay, so it's way over here now. Let's move our particles right there. Okay, great. So there is our particles. Now, uh, it's still got the star trails on it. Everything is operating exactly as it was before. We just want to make a couple of changes. So first of all, I don't want to call it star particles. Let's instead call it star uh, explosion. Explosion. Let's call it star explosion. And basically, let's open up our particle system here. Uh, basically, I want everything to remain the same. Um, I'm not going to use pre-warm and I'll change off looping later. I don't want it to loop. The only thing I really want to change is the emission rate. So currently we've got ourselves some, some particles that are coming out over time and I don't want that at all. So I'm going to set my rate to zero. Bang! So now we've got absolutely no particles coming out over time. I'm going to use this little plus sign over here to automatically create a burst. All right, And this burst just means all the particles come out at exactly the same time. And if you want to, you can have a minimum and maximum number so that it's a different amount each time. It doesn't really matter. So with that done, I like everything like that. I'm going to leave everything like this. It's a burst effect. It'll be the final burst, and then our character will, the, the thing will all disappear. All I'm going to do now is make sure that our looping is turned off. OK, let's close this up. Let's close off our, our particle system. Uh, one other thing I want to happen, so that gives our, our player an indication visually that they've successfully picked up this piece of cake. Let's give them a, a uh, um, an audio cue as well. All right, so I'm going to say add component, and I'm going to add an audio source. Bang. Now, I have not supplied you guys with any of my audio uh, for this game in the, in the uh, assets that I've given you. Uh, basically, I find my sounds uh, online uh, from free sources. Uh, I use freesource.org, or sorry, excuse me, freesound.org, www.freesound.org uh, for a lot of things. I use all of their sounds strictly for demonstration purposes. I don't in any way use it for commercial purposes. Uh, so make sure you guys are reading through the licenses if you download sounds from freesound.org. Make sure you read through the licenses so you understand exactly what you've got here. Everything that I use is strictly for educational purposes. Uh, there is no, there is no, uh, nothing is being sold. Okay, so I've got myself an audio source here, and basically the name, as the name implies, audio source allows us to put a clip in place, and it will play whenever we want it to play. So let me go in here for my audio, find my audios. I've got this thing here called Cake Pickup Sound, and I'm going to add it to my Star Explosion. Okay, just like that. And the volume's pretty loud. If I hit play, watch it. It's pretty darn loud, so let's turn that way down. Let's put it at like 0 0.2. 0 0.2. All right, now let's play it. Great, we got our explosion happening and our sound plays. That's exactly what we want. This star explosion now is a self-contained asset. 
All right, if I if I instantiate this, which means create it anywhere at any time through code, if I instantiate it, the explosion will occur and the sound will automatically play. Okay, let's do exactly that then. Let's make sure we've got ourselves a prefab. So let's grab our star explosion and drag it and drop it into our prefabs. Perfect. Now we can use that wherever we want. Once you've successfully added it to your prefabs, you can delete it from your game. Okay, and we can still access it anytime we want right here from the prefabs. Now, what we want to do is we want to set it up so that whenever cake, whenever we've picked up our cake, uh, our cake, we come in here, we hit our trigger, our sphere collider, we hit our trigger, and we automatically go into this, um, we go into this cake controller. So I'm going to double click, double click, <laughs> and it opened up over here. So let's get it and drag it in place. All right, this is our cake controller. And basically what we want to do is after we've destroyed this object, once this object is destroyed, what we basically want to do is we want to instantiate our our success particles. All right, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add myself a brand new serialized field, serialized field. And that just gives us access to this this object to set up this object within the within the uh, within the inspector. All right, and I'm going to set up a new game object because basically what I'm going to do is instantiate a game object. Uh, that's all I'm going to do. And so here's what I want to do. Game object, and we'll call this thing here uh, reward particles. All right, good. And let me just file save this for a second. I want to make sure, I want to make sure that our, let's go back to our prefabs. I want to make sure, I don't know if I did it, prefab, star, explo star explosion. I want to make sure this is located at 0, 0, 0. Okay, perfect. Now, now here's what I want to do. Um, what I want to do, I'm going to go back to our, that's perfectly fine. I want to go back to our scripts here. Where is it? Right here. And once I've got this, this, uh, this thing, this thing initialized within our inspector, I can at any time I want ins instantiate it. So here's what I'm going to do. Right after I've gone through and, or any, anywhere within here you want to really, it doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm going to add it right here. I'm basically going to instantiate instantiate, which means to create. I'm going to instantiate these object. What object? First of all, I'm going to instantiate my reward particles. Where am I going to instantiate it? Uh, I'm going to instantiate it at my character's feet. All right. I already know if my character's in here, so I'm going to say other dot transform dot position. So basically, I'm going to instantiate my reward particles directly at my character's feet, and I want to make sure that I'm instantiating it. There's a couple of different ways I can do this. Uh, my problem right now is these particles I created, they actually have a negative x rotation. And if I if I wasn't, you know, being really lazy, <laughs> I could have actually built another layer on top of this, instantiated the entire thing uh, without any rotation at all. In fact, maybe that's what we'll do. Let me just drag this back into position here just like that for now. And I'm going to game object, create an empty game object that I will call star rewards particles. All right, uh, and I will make sure this is all zeroed out. Reset. So, and I'm just going to grab my star explosion, I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it in place. I'm going to delete it from here. Yes, I'm sure. All right, my star reward particles right here now have a transform of nothing. All right, everything is great. I'm going to grab my star reward particles. I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it right in here. Okay, and I can remove it from here now. Bang. Now, back to this location here. I'm going to I'm going to set everything up at my other dot transform dot position, and I'm going to set it up. Oops, transform dot position comma, and I have to edit a, qu a quaternion rotation. And basically, I'm going to use the identity quaternion dot identity. And that just means no rotation at all. And I'm able to use the quaternion identity simply because of what I just did. I set up a, a hierarchy where on top of everything uh, there was a, a transform with no rotation, which means that the if we go back and we take a look at it really quickly here uh, at our, our reward particles, this, there's nothing on here at all. I'm just going to instantiate this in place. This one down here, my, my star explosion actually has a rotation, but it no longer matters because I have this, this top layer. Okay, And that's why I did that. Okay, so let's let's save this. Did I already save it? File save. Okay, and let's go back in here, and let's take a look at our cake. Bang! Our cake, if everything went okay, should be asking me for a reward particles. I'm going to grab my star reward particles. I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it in place. Now, if I hit play now, bang! There's my cake over there. Let's go over there and grab it. 
we've got our particles that appear at our feet and my character can once again run around. Now we have a problem. There is a problem with this. The problem is that each time we destroy our cake, we pick up our cake and we instantiate our star particles. We are leaving here. Let me just show you. Let me turn off maximize on play. Let me hit play here and let me run over and pick up. Now right now you can see we don't actually have anything in here besides our cake pickup, nothing after cake pickup. Watch what happens. If I run over and I pick up my cake, I instantiate my star reward particles. We don't see anything occurring because of that. Nothing's actually happening here. There's no more star reward particles showing, but we've actually instantiated this object. If we go around, let's say we have a thousand coins or a thousand pieces of cake or whatever in our scene, and we continuously instantiate these star reward particles, we're gonna end up cluttering our entire scene and using up memory with these, these, these cloned objects, all right? So the last thing we wanna do today is we're gonna create a brand new function. And let me go into our star, our star particles right here. I'm going right in the prefab. I'm going to say add component and I'm going to add a brand new script. And I'm going to call the script destroy me. Uh, and let's open that up. Let's open that up. Okay, and our destroy me script is going to be relatively simple. Basically, all we want to happen with our destroy me script is we want the, the after a certain amount of time, we want to, ah, I hate it when this happens. Let's open it again. After a certain amount of time, we want to uh, destroy everything associated with whatever it is this script is attached to. So I'm going to add into this uh, a serialized field. Serialized field. It's going to be a float, uh, and it's going to be called a live time. Okay, and a live time is basically how long we're going to allow this object, wherever this is located, to live. That's it. All right, I'm going to get rid of this update. I have no need of it, so let's delete it. No point in doing anything there. Let's just put this right in the awake. It doesn't matter if it's on the start or the awake. It doesn't really matter. Let's put it on the awake. And all we're going to do is we're going to destroy this object. And we have a number of different options. So we can destroy this object, whatever the object is, or if, if we use the plus, the down uh, thing here, we can destroy this object after a certain amount of time. Okay, and that's the one we're going to be using. So we're going to use destroy. We're going to use, we're going to destroy what? We're going to destroy the game object because this is located on the top level of whatever it is. If you wanted to, you could say, you could say destroy transform dot root dot transform dot game object. All right, to make sure you're destroying the, the entire thing, which is what we'll leave it as for now. Uh, and we want to destroy it after a specific amount of time, after a live time. Bang. All right. Let's file save that. File save. Let's head back over here. And in our in our alive time right here, my destroy me script uh, with my star reward particles, I'm going to set this up for, let's say, two seconds. Okay? So with that in place, after two seconds, our object should be destroyed. So let's give it a try. Right now, we've got ourselves our star reward particles. We made the changes to the actual prefab uh, object was right here. We made this to there. Uh, and when I hit play right now, play, again, maximize on play is not on. We do not have our, our reward particles showing over here. And when I move over, I grab them and the actual, uh, the actual thing is gone. Now, two seconds might have been too short. Let's stop that because it sounded like the, the audio was clipped. Let's put it at three seconds just to make sure. It doesn't really matter how long we leave it. Let's hit play. Perfect, and there we go. Our star particles were destroyed. All right, guys, that's it. That's what I wanted to do today. We're going to use that destroy me script in several other locations. I really hope that you guys have gone through that you guys have gone through and started adding a bunch of stuff to your games. I'm really looking forward to seeing what games you guys are creating. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up thumbs down, comment down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.